Hello, BookTube. I have a bit of a Monday reads for you here. Uh, three books that I'll be rereading and three books that I'll be embarking on for the first time. Uh, and the three, I'll start off with the ones that I'm rereading. And the first two of those are almost Steve asking for trouble. They're, they're two histories of pivotal moments in the career of George Washington, <laughs> which isn't, isn't usually guaranteed to produce good reading for me. But, uh, but the first one, I read it originally, and it, its pieties irritated me, and I just hurled it aside, and now I'm, it's been bothering me. It's been nagging at my mind, so I want to reread it. And it's this. It's Valley Forge, a new history by uh, Bob Drury and Tom Clavin of the disastrously hard winter quarters that the Continental Army had for a couple of seasons. Uh, and the the way that uh, George Washington there in his Sunday finest and Martha Washington without a mouth or mittens or a hat or anything uh, bucked up the troops. And uh, it's an oft-told story. I'm sure that those of you who are familiar with the American Revolution and with the histories of the American Revolution will remember uh, uh, Bob Ketchum's book, Winter Soldiers. Probably one of the best books uh, on the American Revolution just in general, but, uh, you know, on any specific incident in the American Revolution. And I read this, I think, with that book too much in mind. Uh, I want to I try it again. Parts of it have been bothering me, uh, nagging at me to reread it. And if that's, if that's uh, true in the first case, it's even more true in the second case, because the second case is a book that I read closely and a couple of times. <laughs> it's this. It's Nathaniel Philbrick. Uh, this is in the Hurricane's Eye about uh, the siege of Yorktown the battle on the sea lanes outside of Yorktown by the, between the British and the French that decided the American Revolution. Uh, I poured over this book. I combed over it. I was, I was commissioned to write a review of it. And my review had to be in the neighborhood of 850 words. And the original draft of that review was well over 4,000 words, just harrying the author at every step of the way and the way he uses his sources. And uh, I've, it's been nagging at me ever since. So I'm going to read... I'm going to reread two books on uh, on key famous incidents in the career of George Washington. <laughs> we'll see if maybe t the passage of time or whatever will will give me a different insight. And once I do that, I'm going to leave them both alone until the paperbacks. <laughs> so, and then the next one is also a reread. I'm effectively being nagged into it, uh, although no one's intending to nag me. Uh, it's this. It's it's uh, Freshwater by Aqua Eke. Emezi, uh, a Nigerian writer, of course. Uh, this I read this when it first came out, and I thought it was boring and extremely heavy-handed. Uh, but as those of you who watch BookTube will know, Sean, the book maniac, fell in love with this book, just loved it. Uh, and on top of that, that, that would have probably have prompted me to give it a, a rego anyway when it got to me in paperback. But on top of that, the paperback cover blurb is by Sam Sachs of the Wall Street Journal. Uh, a witchy, electrifying story of danger and compulsion, hypnotizing. And for those of you who maybe uh, maybe are fortunate enough not to to be in the uh, grubby little circles of the book reviewing world, that is the holy grail for any uh, mainstream book reviewer: is that you not only have a named blurb on the book instead of just your journal name, but no name by you. You not only have a name blurb, but you're on the cover. And you're not only on the cover, but you're above the title and the, the final cherry on the cake, the final thing that makes this a, a triumph, whatever it happens to any book reviewer, is that you're the only review on the cover. So uh, the Sam Sachs person from the Wall Street Journal scored, you know, a triple hat trick. He's, he's uh, blurbed on the paperback, he's blurbed by name, he's blurbed on the front cover, he's blurbed above the title, and he's blurbed alone on the front cover. So I'm effectively being nagged by my betters to pick this up and read it again, and I will. I will. I will clear my mind and read it again. If if two readers like that can really love this thing, then maybe I miss something. So I, that'll be the last of my rereads for today. Uh, and then we've got uh, new stuff that I'm going to be jumping right into. Uh, the first one being a novel in translation. This is Jan Lianki. This is The the Day the Sun Died. Uh, uh, this is the author of The Explosion Chronicles, which I, when it came, was translated into English, I just loved it, absolutely loved it. So I've been following all of the very similar looking English language translations of this author as they've been coming out. Uh, and this one sounds like just a, a straightforward, uh, you know, 
neo psychological thriller. Uh, in a little village nestled in the Mbolu Mountains, 14 year old Lee Nyanian and his parents were on a funeral parlor. One evening he notices a strange occurrence. Instead of preparing for bed, more and more neighbors start appearing in the streets and fields, carrying on with their daily business as if the sun hadn't already set. Uh, the boy watches mystified. As hundreds of residents are found dream walking, they act out the desires they've suppressed during waking hours. Before long, the, common, the, the community devolves into chaos. And it's up to the boy and his parents uh, to save the town before sunrise. So this takes place all in the course of one night. Uh, I, I'm all on board. I, lo I, lo I really like what this author does, e even in translation. I have to imagine that the translation bears very little similarity to the original. And I hate that feeling, but I, I don't know Chinese, so I'm going to have to live with it. Uh, then the next one is uh, uh, work in nonfiction. This is Unruly Waters. Uh, by Sunil Amrith. This is a, how, how rains, rivers, coasts, and seas have shaped Asia's history. Uh, and it's just a, a full... Um, in this book, the author boldly reimagines Asia's history through the stories of its rains, rivers, coasts, and seas, of the weather watchers and engineers, map makers, and farmers who have sought to tame and control them. From the 19th century to the present, dreams and fears of water have informed visions of political independence and economic development provoked efforts to transform the, nat the nature through dams and pumps, and unleash powerful tensions within and between nations. Starting in India, which is at the heart of the story, Amrith traces this dramatic history by following the monsoons, the mountain rivers, and the, the ocean currents as they cross Asia's borders, linking South Asia and China and Southeast Asia. That sounds fascinating to me. I don't think I've ever read a book like that. So I, I, this is a December release, I think. Uh, I think these all are. Yeah, this is a, a December release, and I'm fascinated to see what the author works. It, it teaches at Harvard and lives in Cambridge, so uh, I've probably run into him at the Brattle and not even known it. And then this last one is fiction, and it is a surefire thing. This is a fiction that I know I love, so I can't wait to read it. This is W.E.B. Griffin and William Butterworth IV, uh, and this is a clandestine operation novel. This one is called The Enemy of My Enemy. And the clandestine operation novels are fantastic. <laughs> they are incredible. If you like uh, military history or military thrillers, historical military thrillers, these are set in the past, don't miss these books. They're amazingly good. <laughs> and this latest one, let's see here. Uh, mon a month ago, Jim Cronley, that's what he's one of the major characters, managed to capture two notorious Nazi war criminals but not without leaving some dead bodies and outraged Austrian police in his wake. He's been lying low ever since, but his little vacation is about to end. Somebody, Odessa, the NKGB, the Hungarian secret police, <laughs> he has a lot of enemies. That's not a long list. Uh, that's not a complete list by any means. Uh, has broken the criminals out of jail, and he must track them down again. But it, there's more to it than that. Evidence has surfaced that in the war's last gas, the, the war being World War II, Heinrich Himmler has stashed away a fortune to launch a secret religion dedicated both to Himmler and to the creation of the Fourth Reich. Uh, that money is still out there in the hands of Odessa, and that infamous organization seems to have acquired a surprising and troubling ally. Cronley is fast finding out what the phrase, enemy of my enemy is my friend, means, uh, and that it offers no guarantees. In the world of international espionage, a friend will kill you just as quickly as an enemy. <laughs> isn't actually true, but nevertheless, that kind of high-octane stuff, there's a, there's a sudden firefight or violence erupting on almost every chapter of, of these books, and it's all done so well. Oh, and the, the personalities, the characters are really good, too. Nothing, you know, this isn't Dostoevsky, but still, uh, this is immensely satisfying examples of its kind. I, I'm not a big fan of of W.B. Griffin at all, uh, but these books, I don't, it must be Butterworth, it must be him that's causing the difference, but I gobble them up, they are, I eagerly look forward to them, so I, I, would, I think you would prefer to read them in order, so you, if you go back to the first one, I don't remember the, the name of the first one, uh, and the list will probably be too long. Uh, okay, the first one is Top Secret, see, the, the names are very bland, uh, but if, you should just go to get a paperback of that at your bookstore, and if, I guarantee you will like it if this is your sort of thing. And then, you know, there's more, so I can't wait to read this. So so we have three new territory and three rereads. We'll see. There's there's The Enemy of My Enemy. Uh, there's Unruly Waters, about uh, the role that, that rushing water has played in Asian history. Fascinating. Uh, then The Day the Sun Died, kind of weird uh, speculative fiction. 
from uh, China's foremost author. Uh, then Valley Forge, uh, new history of you know the broader campaign, but also uh, the hardships of Valley Forge. Uh, In the Hurricane's Eye by Nathaniel Philbrick about the French saving Americans took us. Uh, and lastly, Freshwater, uh, a Nigerian novel that did nothing at all for me. I'm going to try it again because it's got a blurb from what, Sam Sachs on the front cover and Sean the, the book maniac never shuts up about it. So, <laughs> so they must know something and I don't. I'm going to find out. Uh, so that's it. That is my uh, a Monday reads for you. Uh, so I'm going to wrap this up before I start sneezing or coughing, but I'll, I'll be back. <laughs> Thank you, book two.